Why are the Brits so obsessed with tea? Let's find out! Hi, I'm Kate and this is Anglophenia. Now one of the first things you'll be asked by most Brits is, would you like a cup of tea? Yes, we're rather fond of a proper brew, which is what we call a nice cup of tea. And it's our go-to solution for almost any scenario. Want an excuse to gossip with your friends? Invite them over for a cup of tea. Do you have a builder doing some work on your house? It would be offensive not to offer him a cuppa. Going through a personal drama? Yep, you guessed it, a cup of tea will make everyone feel better. It's hardly surprising then that the UK raced through a whopping 165 million cups of tea every day. Seriously, that is a lot of cup lifting. But it's how we stay in such great shape. But how have we become one of the biggest tea drinking nations per capita in the world? Here are a few interesting moments in history that helped make tea a quintessentially British affair. Our love of tea goes back to the mid-1600s, when the British East India Company dominated the tea imported to Britain. We had a constant and growing supply of tea, which was convenient, as we had been excluded from the coffee-exporting Mediterranean during our wars with France and Spain at the time. Whilst our surrounding countries remained hooked on coffee, Britain became a tea-drinking nation. Tea hasn't always been the innocent drink we know and love today. During the 1700s, increasing tea prices saw a rise in both tea smuggling and fake teas, which were often used tea leaves mixed with other leaves and then dyed. These lower priced teas were sold to the working classes, which meant that tea, even if it wasn't the best quality, were no longer just for the rich. Afternoon tea, also known as low tea due to the low tables it was served on, came about in around 1841 thanks to the very hungry tummy of one woman, Anna Russell, the Duchess of Bedford, who took social convention into her own hands and began enjoying a pot of tea and a light snack to satisfy that sinking feeling in the late afternoon. Before long, afternoon tea became quite the social event. Queen Victoria, a friend of the Duchess's, formalised afternoon tea with her Buckingham Palace tea receptions. I think my invite may have gotten lost in the post. Today, afternoon tea is enjoyed at around 4 o'clock in the afternoon and is made up of a selection of finger sandwiches, scones, pastries and homemade cakes. Cream tea is a simpler version with scones, clotted cream, jam and of course a pot of tea. And it's my personal favourite. Not to be mistaken for afternoon tea, high tea, also known as meat tea, was in fact a hot meal of meat pies, vegetables and bread, eaten at the end of the day with a cup of tea by factory workers during the Industrial Revolution. It was called high tea due to the high tables it was served on, but these were just regular sized tables. Today, in many parts of the UK, the evening meal is often referred to as tea, which can be a tad confusing if you're expecting sandwiches and a slice of cake. In the 1880s, tea rooms became fashionable with women, as respectable places they could go to meet their friends for a discreet chat and even discuss politics. Eventually, tea rooms became an integral part of the women's liberation movement. Tea was also used as a morale booster to soldiers during the Second World War, with the Prime Minister Winston Churchill stating that tea is more important than bullets. Hear, hear. Interestingly, 96% of tea consumed in Britain comes in the form of a tea bag, which just so happens to be an American invention. During the early 1900s, tea merchant Thomas Sullivan sent out tea samples to his customers in silken sachets. Americans were naturally enthusiastic about these newfangled, super convenient tea bags, but they didn't catch on in Britain until the 1950s. But boy, do we love them now. So there you are, just a few examples of how tea has become part of British culture and society. Now with all this talk of tea, I bet you're wondering how to make a proper cup of tea. Well, you're in luck. In the next episode, you're formally invited to tea with Anglophenia as we show you how to make a nice cuppa the British way. In the meantime, subscribe for more episodes. And remember, you can tweet us at Anglophenia and follow us on Facebook by liking our page. Thanks for watching. My tea leaves predict you'll enjoy this one. Oh, you'll total tea love that one. That one is quality.